Merkel Media. This was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. But the giant moves, he's got a spear in one hand and he's running really fast and spears Dan and holds him up like this. Somebody else, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge and I blow this head off. I feel something pulling at my leg. And I look over and there are two small gray entities pulling at me. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reached my hand into this bush and I touch air. Couldn't breathe and I couldn't move because I know I'm seeing a monster. Yep. Welcome to the show, everybody. You're listening to The Confessionals. I'm your host, Tony Merkel. Thanks for being here. If you have a crazy, wild experience you want to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. That's theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the contact section, and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me, just get a hold of me. If you want more shows on a weekly basis, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, become a member. Because every week on Thursdays, we drop a member episode. Plus, you get the Tuesday shows ad-free, and you get access to the overtime segments of Tuesday shows, which today is one of them. So if you want to get all those perks as a member, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, and become a member today. Also, friends, we are going on tour. The Confessionals is going on on tour. That's called the Spirits Are In Tour. That's going to be on April 8th through the 9th. I am taking a bus trip of listeners from the Philly area up to New York to the Shanley Hotel. It is a haunted hotel and we are going to be spending the entire night there. We're going to stop at haunted locations on the way up, on the way down, breakfast, lunch, dinner, all included on the cost. If you want more information on this, you can go to the website. There is a special tab at the top called the Spirits Are In Tour, where you can get all the information you need and the contact information if you don't want to write it down right now, because right now you can contact Creed and Jen at Educated Wanderer. The email address is travelgrouptours at AOL.com. The phone number is 973 973- 513-9001 and you can go to the website educatedwanderer.com so go ahead and check that out if you want to come on tour with me over 24 hours hanging out with me and other listeners of the confessionals heading to the shanley hotel to spend a night in this haunted location and friends also lots of you guys listen to the show on a weekly basis but at the same time The listener base that we have, we see the numbers, does not match the Instagram following, which I've told you before, is the place that I hang out most on social media. So please go ahead and follow the confessionals on Instagram. I do a lot of live videos on there, posting all that good stuff. So please go ahead and hang out with me on Instagram. That's the confessionals podcast on Instagram. Okay, today we got Dan coming on the show today. Dan is the host of the show Monster Investigators of America, and he comes on the show today to talk about his encounters in the forest. And one of them stood out so much to me because it was a dog man encounter when he was a kid with his friend and the environment that he found himself in with his friend in this dog man encounter was very strikingly eerily similar 
to the environment and the situation that Lisa was in when she was a child from episode 59. That's why I played it as a reloaded episode yesterday. I hope you guys enjoy this conversation because we got a whole other second hour of overtime conversation with Dan. In the first hour, we covered the New Jersey encounters. And then in the second hour for overtime, we cover the North Carolina encounters with Dan. This is a great conversational show. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get to it. All right, today we got Dan on the show. Dan, how are you doing, man? Dan the man. Doing great, man. Doing great. <laughs> how you doing, man? That's good. So uh, you're from Jersey. You moved to North Carolina at one point, and now you're in Texas, right? Yes. Yes. Good old Texas. Thankfully, it's nice and warm now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys had some issues down there. Um, so before we get in, go before we get going here, some people might recognize your voice, but let's introduce you properly. You are a podcaster as well. Tell people the name of your show, what you do on the show, and where they can find it. All right. So the name of the show is Monster Investigators of America. And what we do is we do live on the air uh, interviews with our listeners. And just like you, sometimes we have somebody give us a an email and uh, want to uh, share their story. Sometimes, unfortunately, there's... I've had a lot that are too afraid to go live on the air. So I just read the, st- the email form and uh, just uh, listen to or look at the live comments, the feed coming in. Yeah, man. So uh, you're doing that podcast and uh, talking to people about their experiences. And you have some of your own experiences and stuff that we're going to be talking about today as well. But um, definitely people should go check that out. Monster, Monster Investigator of America, right? Yes, Monster Investigators of America. Yes, Monster Investigators of America. Check it out. And uh, Dan, let's just start off with home state of New Jersey. And before we get into your experiences within the Pine Barrens uh, and other locations, if you got them here, because I know New Jersey is kind of crazy with uh, just weird experiences. I know I sh- shared on the show before, but I know I had a tr- one of my trucks break down at work and I was being towed and I'm in the cab with the tow truck driver and uh, telling him what I do. And he's told me some stories about the Pine Barrens and uh, and it wasn't even like Bigfoot or uh, Jersey Devil related or anything like that. It was like really creepy stuff, like giant shadows appearing out of nowhere that engulfed light. And it's just like crazy stuff. Um, but I want you to kind of share with people, since you're a native of New Jersey and you do what you do, uh, you're probably somebody who would have some information about the New Jersey Devil. So inform people who are listening what the New Jersey Devil is and some of the lore behind it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so the New Jersey Devil, um, there's a lot of different myths about it. Uh, there's uh, probably even more than the four that I know about uh, with it being a 13 child and, you know, her cursing her 13 child over on Leeds road. Um, there is another one that has a little bit more ground to it that I kind of believe, uh, a little bit more than the rest of them, which is that the father of the New Jersey devil, um, ran, they did have a lot of kids. Uh, he had a run in with a witch and the witch was looking for help. Unfortunately, he did not help the witch. He didn't give her any kind of time whatsoever. And for that, later on, she cursed the final child of uh, him and his wife. The wife keeping the New Jersey devil um, for a long time, they, they kept him apparently in the basement of their house and their cellar area. And finally grew up, got big, got strong and escaped uh, as it goes right up the chimney broke it up broke everything on the way up and has been haunting the new jersey pine barrens ever since you know uh with the stories of the new jersey devil and stuff and as somebody who grew up in jersey uh did you ever give weight to that whole legend and stuff i mean when you hear the origins the origin stories of the jersey devil it seems very um improbable you know but like they say behind all these different legends and lores there's a little bit of truth somewhere at least mixed in so do you think 
the Jersey Devil is what it is made out to be, this like monster-like creature roaming the woods? Do you think it, it, it could have been at one point, it's gone now, it's an entity now? What, what, are, what are your conclusions since you're from that area? Uh, since I used to, I read a lot of books. I mean, I started back, uh, when I was in third, ga- third grade, I did a project and the project I did end up being on the New Jersey devil. And that's when I first learned about the, the whole 13 child, um, story behind it. To me, that story is just less, less likely. I mean, as, as a parent myself, um, now, and as you are, I, I could never imagine saying, Oh, I curse this child that's coming out regardless because it's your child. Um, so later on when I did a little bit more, uh, investigating and looking into it and I found that story about the, the witch and the father, it made a little bit more sense to me and just knowing different types of backgrounds, like, uh, with the skinwalkers and stuff like that, I would say it's definitely a possibility. There's a lot of people, there's even a famous general and unfortunately it slips my mind uh, that had seen the Jersey devil, apparently not just seen the Jersey devil, but shot a cannon at the New Jersey devil says he made impact. But a lot of times when you think you hit something, you know, you missed yeah. and you want to, you want to believe you did, but you just don't. So it's been seen throughout the last, uh, 200 plus years. And, um, I, I don't now. I believe it's more of an entity than anything else. Uh, just as weird as New Jersey really is, I I, I don't think it's a, an actual physical flesh and blood uh, thing. Now I think it's more just a, a, an entity. That general, the, the people should be like, "Where's the body, bro? Where's the body?" You know, like that's what everybody says about Bigfoot these days. Where's the body? Why can't we get the body? You know, if you made contact with the cannon, where's the body, bro? You know. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I totally understand what you're saying. And you know, when I think about the Jersey, because I'm not far from Jersey, I'm just on the other side of Philly, which Philly is right across the river from Pine Barrens, pretty much. Um, you know, I, I think about that and stuff, and I, I think, you know, maybe you know, once upon a time there was an interaction with a witch or something like that, where she cursed the family, and it turns out that you know, after that incident, one of the kids just turned into just this terrible terror of a person. And, you know, mom and dad said, that's because the witch cursed us. That's because the witch cursed us. And that kid, you know, maybe locally or even amongst the family, they hated him so much. They're like, you're such a devil. You're such a devil. You know, you're the Jersey devil, the devil of Jersey. And then that kid goes out and just wreaks havoc on the community, robbing, still stealing, killing people and stuff. And the lore begins to grow. And, you know, he's known as the Jersey devil. And, you know, then there's some descriptive uh, people along the way that are like, yeah, he, he was such a devil. I swear he had a tail on him, you know, and he he flew away, you know, and all of a sudden it becomes this story, you know, but like, that's what I mean. Like, there's always this little bit of truth somewhere in these lures most of the time, unless you find the original writings of something where it was actually a a tale. It was just a story made up by an author a long time ago, and it just turned into what it is. But I don't know. I, I tend to lean in that direction sometimes with with that story is that like, we don't know. Maybe it was just somebody who was just a really bad person and, and just locally known as that is the Jersey devil right there, you know? And even back back then, uh, with any kind of deformities, now, any kind of physical deformities back yeah. then, a, a lot of the times people were looked at that they were evil, that they have something that had a demon in them. So uh, even if it came out and it was deformed, then they kept it out of love but as you said it just got way too hard to handle and he grew into a horrible person uh that just the slight deformities that they had probably people seen it and was like oh that's the devil and just kept on growing with legend like you said with the tail bat wings hooves of a deer i mean it's just way crazy things that come out um but there's people that said they've seen them so it, it, it's kind of like that chimera stuff and it, it like you just um it, it looks like i mean when you see pictures of the drawings and stuff it looks like something that uh is a mix of a lot of different creatures and i mean it looks uh, i mean if i saw it i'd be absolutely terrified um do, do you recall how big they say that thing is i feel like i it if my memory serves correct it's not that big like maybe like five feet four feet something like that is that right 
I believe that the average size, like it, it definitely varies, I guess, depending on whoever's telling the story. But the, most of the time, the story is re- like right around five foot five area. Uh, I've heard some people say seven foot. I, I can't see how. Well, I can't say that. That was I just almost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so myself couldn't see a seven foot beast like that. Get away. But. Guess yeah, again. Sasquatch, yeah, so. guess again on that one. No, but I, I get it, man. Like when I think about it, like you know, being about five feet tall, I'm just like, man, I'll smack that thing. I don't care, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Up until it's in front of you, then you're, yeah. you're looking the other way. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, shoot, if I if I saw something like that that was two feet tall, I'd be freaked out. I'm like, oh, I'm out of here, you know, because all you're thinking about is it moving supersonic speed and like just swirling around you, chewing your flesh off as you run away, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's why I just, even something that if it was a tiny little creature, I just, maybe if it was six inches, I might, you know, think about giving it a punt, but, uh, otherwise anything bigger than that, I, I'd probably hightail it out. So let's talk about, uh, some pine barren stories that you experienced. I know, uh, you have, uh, plenty of experiences that you've ex- went through that you know maybe weren't really listed in the email as much. But let's start off in the New Jersey Pine Barrens. And while you're telling that story, I'm going to get up and close my window because I hear birds chirping. <laughs> All right, no problem. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to say this is back in 2008. Um, we went into a spot in the Pine Barrens by... Uh, Warren State Forest and Warren State Forest that where we went is a very rural, rural area. There is, this is a campground where you, there's, this ain't glam camping. This is camping. Like you bring a tent. That's what you got to sleep in. You don't have a shower. You don't have any of that stuff. You have the river that runs on the back end of it. Um, and that's pretty much it. And the, the crazy thing is like the, this when I'm the story that I'm telling right now, it started off weird from the get go. Like there was nothing that was normal about this. Me and the, the girls dating at the time, we roll in getting ready to set up. We found that the spot where we're going to camp and uh, you have the river on the backside. As we go in on the left side, there's this brand new, beautiful tent set up with chairs that are in the outside had a canoe that was already out there and not a person in sight, no vehicles or anything, but that's fine. It was already, it was right around 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So figured they're probably out going hiking or something like that. Well, we start setting up the tent. She decided she asked if she could uh, go out and run, but right beforehand, there's this, this old man in this, old, old school pickup truck that probably from like 1965 rolls in and it kind of looked like the guy from, I don't know if you ever seen the movie wrong turn, but it kind of looked like one of the guys from the movie wrong turn. It's a big old beard and he just keeps on getting in out of his truck and like get goes into the truck, gets out of the truck, looks on the ground and is doing this probably I'm going to say every 10 feet moving his truck and messing with the ground. And I'm like, what in the world is this guy doing? Like what? So I just continue to watch as I'm setting up the girl I'm dating ends up leaving to go get some more, uh, food and some drinks for us. As I finish setting everything up, this guy is going on for about 45 minutes doing this. And then finally leaves. So finally everything's all set up. She comes back. We're cooked dinner eating and then as we're eating we hear this this noise that i I grew up uh, i grew up in the jersey woods like i would sleep outside the woods with just my pullover or my hoodie and be out in the woods and that's it no tent no nothing plenty of times uh so I, i i i know the animals that are out there and there was just this weird high pitched noise that I can only describe almost sounds like a almost sound like a baby cry but with uh, like an animal (laughs) animal instinct like an animal noise attached to it 
So it caught both of our attention because it happened. It was, it sounded like it was right over across the river. So I'm looking, trying to see if there's anything else that's over there. Couldn't see anything. Five minutes later, noise happens again. And then that's it. Start to eat dinner. Uh, another hour later passes by and then we, it's getting darker now and we hear people walking. Now, there's nobody else was there besides us and whoever was supposed to be in that tent. That Those people in that tent still have not showed back up. Um, and then we're even hearing people walking. It's dark enough where if you don't have a flashlight, you're not going to see where you're, where you're stepping. So you could easily trip, twist your ankle, get yourself messed up. But it sounded like it, probably a group, I'd say, of like, I don't know, four people walking and doing some kind of weird chant. Now at this time, the girl I'm with is really starting to get freaked out. And I'm telling her, I'm like, listen, everything's okay. We're fine. Everything's going to be okay. I had two machetes on me because I just normally carried one machete with me and another as a backup. Um, just, but with this, the way this day was really going, I decided to have them both on me. So I, I looked like Crocodile Dundee. Or Leonardo the Ninja, the Ninja Turtle. Yes. <laughs> like, like one of the Ninja Turtles. So I'm telling everything's going to be fine. And that was going on for about 15 minutes. And I was like, man, what, what, is, what is going on here? And then finally that stops. So I get her to calm down and relax a little bit more. And uh, more time passes by, I'd probably say like another half hour, 45 minutes. And all of a sudden, there's this light that's probably about 35, 30 yards away from us. Now, it started off like it was five feet from the ground and then just go straight down, maybe six inches away from the ground. And it continued to do this over and over again. And it the light wasn't like a flashlight, like with a flashlight, you, you see the beam. Um, this was like a light that kind of just radiated around it. So it really caught my attention and something inside me like clicked that it didn't seem like something was right. So I had a big spotlight that I, I, I brought with us and I picked it up and I shined it over there because I figured, well, maybe, or I, I was probably hoping maybe this is a person and they met a loss, something could be that our neighbors across the way. Let me shine a light, see if they're there and I'll see if I can help them out. I shine that spotlight on them. The light disappears and there's nobody there. Nobody at all, nothing around. I, I, and this, Light could cover a lot of territory, so I just went from right to left and looking, didn't find anything. Now, the girl that I was with at the time seen the same exact thing, and she was like, what What was that? That's There's nobody there. And I'm like, oh, I was probably just, you know, I don't know, maybe like a gas or, or, or something. I don't know. So then put the light back down. Within five minutes, that light is back up. And doing the same exact thing. And it was almost like it was trying to grab my attention. Because part of me wanted to walk towards it and, and investigate. And then another part of me, which was like a voice inside my head, I was saying, no, stay put. Just sit down and let it, whatever this is pass by. Because um, I did get up and I took a couple steps forward. And and the, the girl I was with was like, what are you doing? I said, I want to go, I want to go look to see what this is. If it's a person, maybe they need help or, or if it's something else, I just rather, I want to see. And then the, it was just like a voice that just said, no, nah, sit back down, just let it, let it go. So I sat back down, I put the light up again, flashed it in the area, nothing. Um, so for, for that trip, that was, that was technically it, at least with the creepy things. Uh, that passed by, we went to bed, um, five minutes after we went to bed, there's a noise in the back for a tent. I knew what the, I knew what it was immediately. Uh, cause I, I, I bought one of those, uh, little buckets so she could use to use the restroom. It, and it was, a, it was a raccoon. 
scared the daylights out of her. I knew what it was. So I walk out, check. It's the raccoon, has a piece of top of like the whole roll of tall paper in his hand. Tries to get a little close to me. So I just like hit the ground trying to scare it. Then scary, got a little bit closer to me. And I like flipped the machete on its blunted side because I didn't want to hurt it. So I just tapped it with it and it took off. And it like ran five feet, turns around, shows me it has the tall paper and takes off. It's like, yeah, I got what I wanted anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sucker. Oh. It was uh, definitely something out of a movie. Okay, here's our first sponsor for today, which is Cerebral. I've been talking about Cerebral for a while. And you know what, friends? It's because anxiety and depression has literally doubled in the U.S. in the past couple of years. And I think we know why that is. But there is need for for solutions to these problems people are having. And that's why I like promoting services like Cerebral. In fact, I'll tell you this much, I am just getting over COVID. And there's something that I just found out that people told me that is actually a thing. I didn't know it was a thing, but I was talking on my Instagram live to the audience about you know going through COVID and all that stuff. And I mentioned about how it seems like COVID took motivation out of my life. Like I felt depressed, sad, felt like I was going nowhere, felt like I was looking at the show and thinking to myself, why am I doing this? It's nothing. It's worthless. Nobody listens. Nobody cares. Like just all this like self doubt coming through my head. And I was like, I don't know where this is coming from. And people were telling me that I had COVID brain. And I said, what was that? And apparently people who get COVID sometimes have this like COVID brain where it's just everything in their life seems worthless. And that's what I was going through. And I was thinking, man, if I don't cut this soon, I'm going to actually contact Cerebral myself and talk to somebody because I I need to get out of this funk. Fortunately for me, it only lasted a few days and I was good to go. But there's a lot of things that people go through in life that they just need to talk to somebody. And Cerebral is one of those places that you can go to talk to somebody because Cerebral is an online mental health service that offers prescription medication, counseling, and therapy for anxiety, depression, ADHD, insomnia, and more. Listen, friends, Cerebral has a great service here because not only do they help you with therapy and counseling, they also do the prescription medication service where you literally have your medications delivered right to your door. You skip the whole line at the CVS pharmacy or wherever you get your prescriptions. And Cerebral is one third of the cost. Literally way more affordable than your traditional therapy. And you don't need health insurance if you don't have it to use Cerebral. So listen, friends, right now, for my listeners of this program, you can receive 65% off your first month of medication management and care counseling at Cerebral.com slash Tony. Go to Cerebral.com slash Tony for 65% off your first month. That's just a total of $30 to get started. Join Cerebral today on their mission to make quality mental health care accessible and affordable for all. So what do you think the uh, the light ho- the whole light situation is? I mean, I know, you know, obviously by just by the name of your your podcast, I mean, uh clearly you're in you're into the whole monster and Bigfoot type thing and people talk about the lights being associated with Bigfoot and I definitely think there's something to that, but I don't think that all lights people see is Bigfoot. Uh what do you think that whole situation was? I mean, cuz you I mean, you had that feeling on the inside. Um and the way you described it, 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 maybe it's just me picturing in my head, but it sounded like it was a small ball of light, I'm assuming, that radiated light, or was it like a big sphere, like a, a beach ball? It was, it was like a sphere, almost like, you know, like the regular, not the big beach balls that you, you get, but like if you go to Walmart and get the like that medium-sized beach ball, probably about that size, and it just kept on going up and down the whole time, and it like... <sighs> No way, like, I, I, I try to cross things out of my mind as I go through stuff like this, just to be like, all right, so maybe it's a person with a lantern. Lantern could possibly project something more more of that style, but then when I put my light on it, there would be a person attached to it, and it wouldn't just disappear. But I put my light over there, there's nothing whatsoever. Um, I think it definitely could have been uh, one of the lights that everybody says that they, well, not everybody, but people say that they see um out there at the time i didn't that's not what i thought it was because i've never heard of them so i've i've never experienced that before myself uh 
beforehand. So when I finally looked at it and I looked looked into it, I was like, man, there's these people that are seeing these things, man. That it almost describes exactly what I seen. Um, even more so because the the voice in my head wasn't my voice telling me to sit down. It was like a, a secondary voice was like, don't come over here. Don't just leave it alone and let whatever that is bypass. And normally I don't, I don't listen to uh, what other people tell me. Cause I always try to go and find out for myself, but for whatever reason, I decided that might be a good idea to listen to the voice tell me to sit down and, and relax. I thought, um, I thought you were going to say, normally I don't listen to the other voices that aren't me in my head. I was like, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm messing with you. But no, I, I get it, man. I, I do get it. Um, and you mentioned earlier in the story about how there was you, you and her heard like chatter. Uh, is that now you heard chatter and I know you know about the Sierra sounds. Is it something similar or is it com- completely different? Uh, it was definitely different. It was a chatter that I could not like the Sierra sounds were like, I guess because they were louder because the chatter that I heard was almost like they were trying, whatever it was, was trying to talk softly as to almost not really bother us. Um, but it wasn't English. Or, uh, but any of the language that I, I actually know. So, uh, like, uh, in in Jersey, it's it's mainly English and Spanish, and I, I know a decent amount of Spanish where I can recognize, at the very least, if that's what it is. But it wasn't either of, of those, and I was just like, man, what what are they saying? I don't understand. Like, I can't understand it. And the same thing with the girl I was with, and she was she was actually she was Puerto Rican, so she knows would definitely know uh, if they were speaking Spanish. And she, I, I even asked her, I said, do you, can you recognize what, what that is? And she says, no, I don't, I, I've never heard of that before. And uh, I mean, that's when she got really freaked out. And that's just when I, I came a little bit more of aware of uh, everything going around, uh, what was going on around us just because, I had her with me and I, I didn't want to, if it was just me, I probably wouldn't care as much, but having somebody else there with you that you obviously care about, you don't want to put them in, in any kind of jeopardy. So I, I, I stayed up a little extra long that night just to make sure everything was calmed down. Um, but the chatter, I just couldn't, couldn't recognize even with the Sierra sounds that maybe if you, you turn it down like a bit, cause they're, they're more like yelling and turn it to where they're lowly uh, talking. It, it might come close to it, but I, I think it was still still different. It's interesting. Now, um, your neighbors that weren't there, did they ever return that you know of as far as like, you know, while uh, during the night or the next day? No, uh, we... we were there until probably five o'clock the next day. She, of course, didn't want to do a repeat of uh what happened so you know we were supposed to stay there a whole weekend she didn't want to stay can't blame her because of what happened uh but they never came back and that was another reason why she wanted to leave she goes who leaves brand new stuff here Uh, like at least a 400 hundred dollar kayak um brand new tent that was probably close to 200 dollars and just leaves yeah people who want to leave in a hurry maybe do that stuff, you know? And I'm sure she was thinking that you're thinking that. And, uh, you know, even the old man with his truck uh, that you saw earlier, what do you make of that? I mean, it it was almost like he was looking for something back and forth by getting in and out of the truck, right? Yeah, it was weird because it was also, it was more closer to like there's the other tent side of things. Um, because we had the river to our back and the river was against their back. So we're on the left side, they're on the right side. And it was just like, he stayed on the right side, but he, he kept on also keeping an eye on what I was doing. Like he, every now and then he would look over and it was, it didn't seem like he was like the, being like a nosy person. Like some people are just like, Oh, what's going on over here. This guy just kept on looking and then looking and like keeping an eye on me no matter what. 
um, even up until he left. So I walked over to just to try to see if I could figure out what was going on, uh, what he was looking for, or maybe what he was putting down and, and couldn't find anything whatsoever. Interesting. Makes you wonder if he was looking for some kind of print or what, but uh, it, it, the, given the environment that you had set up there with the guy and the neighbors and then what happened that night, it seems like, it seems like maybe something was going on that was scaring people away and it worked. I mean, it scared you guys away too, you know? So it wasn't just them. I mean, you guys clearly didn't feel comfortable staying another night and you got out and stuff. Um, now, that happens now, but you had another experience with a friend when you went camping, uh, where I believe it sounded like you you were in your early twenties or something like that you were you were younger and um, and you guys went out and you had an experience that night while you guys were camping. Why don't you talk about that? Uh yeah, uh, me and my buddy, um, he was one of my partners in crime. Like we would, he would be the guy that's sleeping outside with me in, in the other hoodie, like right next to me as we're sleeping on the woods. <laughs> Uh, so I was, I just hit 20, uh, 22. He just hit 21 and I got my, I, I, oddly enough, I, I had a red Honda accent GL. Um, one of the first vehicles I ever bought for myself. So I drove, picked him up. I'm like, Hey man, let's just go camping. He goes, we're at it. So let's just pick a random spot. So he said, all right. So we drove down 72 for a long time. And if you drive down 72 um, and it goes past actually where it breaks into, uh, I think it's 571 maybe, um, you go a little bit further. We passed, a, a, I remember passing a Wawa, five miles after that, there's like these trails and it's all forest. So we just made a left on one, a random trail and went about probably, I'd say around two, three miles in. Made a right turn, went I think a mile down, and then um, just picked a random campsite. We're like, all right, right, right here, we'll camp. So we put up the tent, um, had everything all set up, no issues, and uh, had a couple beers. And we're just talking about you know our everyday life, how things have been since we graduated in high school, and and different stuff like that. So later on, and I can't, my friend's known to wake me up over noises that he hears. Cause we, we slept out in like the, uh, like a bird sanctuary. He woke me up at two o'clock in the morning because he heard something, which was a bird. And I got highly <laughs> aggravated at him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play the 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 uh, the game of figuring out what's in a bird sanctuary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, wake, wake up, man! I'm like, what, what, what's going on? It was, what, what's that noise? I'm like, dude, come, come on, man! We're we're in a bird sanctuary. There's there's birds all over the place. I'm like, don't come on, don't wake me up. We were freezing that night to begin with, so it was harder to fall asleep. And then, uh, so that's what he's known to do. So of course at this camping trip, what does he do around? I want to say it's like around 12, one o'clock. He does that same thing to me. I think it was closer to 12. Shakes me, wakes me up. He goes, damn, damn, damn. I hear it. And I'm like, I just look at him. I don't let him finish. I'm like, dude, seriously, you don't hear. And as soon as I say the word here, something stepped right next to my face because we were right. I was, we we're inside the tent, but right outside the tent, probably within six inches, there's something that stepped right next to my face and that caught my full attention. And I looked at him. I'm like, what? He goes, go, go outside and check that out, man. Go outside and look, look. I'm like, what? I might just be quiet for a second. And I'm listening to this whatever this is, walk around the tent and it's walking around clearly it's bipedal. You could tell it's bipedal because a deer, anything like that, you're going to hear click, 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 click. Like right, right away, you'll, you'll hear the other footsteps approaching, not just one, two, one, two. Um, so this thing's just stepping around, walking around the tent and looked at where we had our campfire 
mess with the campfire a little bit. So now my friend's really spazzing out. So it makes, I'm like, all right, just calm down. He's like, dude, can you go out, go stick your head outside? And I looked at him like, what? You'll stick your head outside. See if it's friendly. I said, you stick your head outside and see if it's friendly. <laughs> I'm like, why, why would I do that? And he's like, come on, please. He goes, this thing's not going away. So I grabbed, I always have a knife or a machete on me. Mostly machetes when I go camping just to help break with firewood and whatnot. So I start to unzip the tent. I have the machete in my hand because I'm like, well, whatever this is, you know, it could be if it's a person, they shouldn't be walking around somebody's campsite. And they're probably a little crazy, especially if you're circling around somebody's campsite. As soon as I start to zip, I maybe unzipped it six inches and this thing booked. And you could hear it snap every thing that got in its path. And it was in the Pine Barrens, it was very thick. So you have trees that are like, you know, anywhere from two inches thick to eight, 10 inches thick. And whatever this was just broke everything in its path. And until finally it was gone, didn't hear it anymore. It stopped running. And, um, I looked, I just looked around real quick. Uh, I didn't go really anywhere. I stepped outside, stayed in front of the tent the entire time. Took my flashlight, looked around, didn't see anything. I went back in the tent. I'm like, dude, I think whatever it was is gone. Let's just go back to sleep. He's like, all right, man, I just, but I, I want to leave tomorrow then. I'm like, yeah, we'll leave tomorrow. That's fine. I'm not unhooking the, the tent up. I'm not staying in the car just in case it's, it is a person and whatnot. Cause that's what was in my, my mind at the time. I was thinking it was a person and, uh, sure enough, um, he wakes me up another a couple hours later, he had to use the restroom and he wanted me to walk, walk him to the watches back. And I was, I re, uh, reluctantly did after about five minutes of bickering with him, asking him why, but turned around, let him do his thing, and then went back to bed, woke up the next day, and I had a look around, and we seen uh, some pretty big prints that we couldn't make any kind of understanding of. Um, and I wasn't even looking for prints. He brought it to my attention because I was trying to see what he was breaking, because you could hear just stuff snapping. And about five feet into the brush, you can see this tree, probably six inches thick, snapped. No, no person's going to do that. I mean, unless you're sitting there maybe kicking it, but running into it, I can't see anybody big enough to just crack like something completely in half, like it was nothing. Um, so that's what got my attention. My my friends like, hey, dude, what, what is this? And I looked down, and it was. That it was a footprint. So we couldn't tell. Like there's 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 footprint and there was uh also deer like deer tracks around because it's it's all local to the deer in the in the pine barrens. So but the the out of the thing that was out of place was the footprint. How big was it? Uh I would I would say thirteen and a half inches. That's yeah, pretty good size, uh, man. Man. and uh, probably maybe a time and a half, maybe two times wider than my foot. So probably four or five inches wide. I mean, it wasn't super big. Um, but the thing that threw me off was just like the the tree is getting snapped in half, and that kind of made me realize that I was number one. <laughs> with him hanging out with me is just the wrong company to be out there. Even trying to, if I wanted to stay another night, uh, because he was scared out of his mind, uh, especially when he seen a footprint and I was showing him the trees that broke. The, the crazy thing is though, cause I followed the line, the line stopped, um, probably about 25 yards in. 
the, the, the destruction stopped. So it almost made me like think that he ran 25 yards and, or whatever ran 25 yards and stopped and just like either walked the rest of the way or hung low to see what we were doing. Like if we were coming out to look around um, and just keep an eye on what was going on with our site. Okay, our last sponsor today is brought to you by Simply Safe. Love Simply Safe. Talked about them a long time. I use Simply Safe, and that's because they are affordable and effective. I'm a big fan of their new outdoor cameras that I have plastered all over my house. I have one on every entry doorway of my house so I can see if anybody comes up to that door and approaching. The way the camera it works is you can actually see a very wide angle on the camera, so you get a great view. It's HD color. It switches on as soon as somebody approaches and starts recording immediately, so you never miss it. Even if you don't catch it live, it will be on recording for you. And listen, you guys heard it a few weeks ago. I played the recording of when the police arrived at my house because my brother tripped the alarm. They responded extremely quickly. It was a great service to have. Even though it wasn't an emergency, it did make me feel better. And that's because Simply Safe is monitored 24-7 by professionals ready to dispatch police, firefighters, or EMTs to your home. It is a great service to have, friends, and you are able to install it yourself. I did my entire house myself. I put all the sensors on the windows, the doorways, the cameras, everything. I did myself, and I am not that great at figuring some of this stuff out, but I did do it all on my own. And if I can do it, you can do it too. And right now, you can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash confessionals. Go today and claim your free indoor security camera plus 20% off interactive monitoring. Go to simplysafe.com slash confessionals, get your free indoor camera, get your 20% discount, and get your family secure today. Yeah, and you mentioned about the Pine Barrens being thick and everything, and I just want to clarify for people listening that maybe aren't familiar with the Pine Barrens. With your description, you said that they're thick. And then you went and said that, you know, trees can be two inches to, you know, I think you said eight inches and people are thinking that's not a very thick tree. We are talking about density of the forest. It's extremely, yes, yes. extremely thick. Um, I've never, no, I don't think I've ever really gone hiking or anything like that in the Pine Barrens, but I used to drive truck uh, in South Jersey and you would drive right around them. And I'm telling you, man, I was astonished at how thick the Pine Barrens were when I'm driving by. I mean, you can't see into them because it's just thick. Tr- uh, I mean, trees just right next to each other everywhere. And so I I wouldn't even want to, for pleasure purposes, I wouldn't even want to hike in the Pine Barrens because it, it, it seems like a place where you you would, it would take you forever to get anywhere because you have to walk in between all these freaking trees. Well, that's, that's the thing. Like it's, it's, it is super thick. And even with the hiking trails, they're, if they're not, taken care of or if they're not uh you know hiked on a regular basis the 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 nature will take it right back over very easily um i went back to that same uh campsite that i was originally talking about just last year and seen a um the, the, a giant difference. It was almost like nature completely took that area over. They stopped using that campsite for whatever reason. Um, there's a lot of, uh, I think it was AT&T signs all over the place. It didn't say private property or any, anything like that. Um, but there was like a bunch of AT&T signs now all over the place. Um, that's where they're putting their 5g towers. Then that's what it's all about, man. The 5g towers. (laughs) Yes, it is. It's crazy, and because uh, I was I was looking into something completely different. Um, a gentleman that went missing back in 2013. So I was trying to look into that because uh, not too far away from it is where he disappeared, um, which didn't didn't make a lot of sense either. So yeah, I can understand. I mean, after having an experience like that, and then somebody going disappearing in that area your curiosity to peak and then going back and seeing nobody using the camping area. You're like, well, maybe whatever we experienced was experienced by other people. And yeah, it's kind of scares people away. 
if you do it enough times, I mean, people are going to stop coming back. So I can't imagine that campsite was, you know, heavily frequented, like, uh, you know, I don't know, like a touristy place or anything like that. So you probably only have to scare off a dozen or so people before, you know, nobody really comes back anymore. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I know the, uh, two, two of the times I went there, I think the, uh, Boy Scouts were there. Um, cause it was a reasonably decent sized place. Uh, but most of the time, if, if I went there, there might've been maybe one or two other, uh, people out there. I mean, I would mainly go during the week just because I know people aren't normally out there during the week. Um, and it's more quiet and I'd rather just, if, if I'm going out doing like an investigation or something like that, I'd rather go out, uh, and where it's quiet and look things up and check things out myself. Or if I just want to get away, you know, in, in camp and or try to have a good time without anything creepy happening, uh, go, go out during the week. But so, uh, both those stories you shared with us are in Jersey, right? Yes. They're both in the, okay. uh, both in the Pine Barrens, probably, within 15, 20 miles away from each other, I guess. Now, this next door I want to hear about, um, I, I, I stopped you from telling me because <laughs> I was like, don't go any further. I, I, wanted, I just want to say it for the recording. Uh, but this happened in Jersey as well. And I'm not sure if it happened in the Pine Barrens or near the Pine Barrens, but go ahead and go into it because uh, just leading up to what you were sharing, I was like, ooh, this sounds creepy. I want to hear about it. <laughs> so Yes. Yes. All right. So... Uh, it's still part of the Pine Barrens. It happened in um, Brick, New Jersey. Um, I was four or five years old when this happened. My mother took me out to a friend's house. And her friend uh, had two other kids. The one was, I know the one was my age, and the other one was, uh, I think, maybe a year younger. Um, so we just went out to play. Their, their backyard was pretty much uh, the forest, the woods. So they had like a little place out in the backyard and whatnot. And we were out there playing for a while. And then the, the one kid's like, Oh, do you want, do you, you know, do you want to meet like one of, one of my friends? So but I was like, Oh yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's go do that. And then he brings me down this trail. And as a kid, it, like I said, it seems like forever, but it must've been maybe maybe a half mile in or so. And then right off this trail, there's like this little wooden broken down shack. And even at four or five years old, I knew something was not right. Cause I used to watch the, you know, Jason movies. <laughs> As at four or five my, years old. <laughs> when, when my older, my older brothers and sisters used to force me to watch this stuff. Jeez. So, like, I, I had a feeling that something just was not right. So, he's like, all right, you just got to be a little quiet. And I'm just, so we're, we're going in. And you see, like, these broken up toys around this shack. And they look like they were chewed on. Like, actual, actual chewed on. And he peeks in the window and he's like, Oh, he's, he's here. He's here. Go, go peek in and take a look. I peek in and take a look and instantly fear took my body. Um, when I looked through the window, it, it looked like what I, what now everybody says is dog, dog man. No way. Um, it scared the daylights out of me. Like I, I remember grabbing his little, his little brother and trying to run. And we both stop and he's still there. And then finally I, he ends up catching up with us, but we, we ran all the way in and that, it, uh, I was trying to say what, what happened with my mother and of course as as a four or five year old you're not going to be taken serious no matter what but i i said i I never wanted to go back there whatsoever it it was one of the scariest things that i've ever seen i was expecting like 
a kid, of course, because when you're saying, oh, that's my friend and you're, you're a little kid, that's what you're expecting. Um, even looking at it as an adult now, maybe a little homeless kid or something that lives out there. Um, but to, to peek in the window and then see something that you get told is fake and not real become very real and not that fake. Like it was definitely the scariest experience of my life to see something like that. Man, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Um, how big are we talking about here? Do you remember roughly? I mean, everything to a little kid's huge, but if you can, kind yeah, of I mean, everything's pretty big, but I would probably say close to six foot. Was it standing um, up on two legs? Uh, it was bent over. Um, okay. It was it was on on two legs, bent over, doing something, and I was like, I, I seen it. It peaked back. I don't know if it see me or not, but that's when I just took off uh, and dragging his little brother behind me. And he stuck around though for a little bit, right? Yes, he stayed around for for some reason, and that's like we stopped and we were calling him, and then finally he he started to move, so ran again and made it to the yard. I don't think his little brother ever seen this creature because he, he's, he was terrified in, in tears and, and whatnot as like, as well. Cause you, you're, you're seeing a monster that you get told does not exist. Like, no, there's no such thing as monsters. And when you see something like that, obviously you, you're like, no, there really is some a such thing as a monster that it, it was probably the scariest thing ever. Now, he said it was his friend. He stuck be- stuck back. Did he ever describe a relationship with him? Like after that, you saw that you're like, you hang out with that thing. I mean, did he ever go into any details? Because I mean, you mentioned about there being toys that were chewed on. Do you think he brought those toys or what? That's what it seems like. Because we we probably only after afterwards stayed for another fifteen minutes. Um, so we didn't stay up too much longer after it happened. Uh. But like the way that he was saying, like he he that he would say that like, he would all oh, grab like like old school He Man doll, grab that and gave it to him. But it was stuff that was all chewed up, like like it was getting gnawed on for like almost like a almost like a dog toy, and it, it was just uh, like <laughs> if he had a friendship with it, I just. Or maybe as a kid, you know, I know some kids with, with ghosts or whatnot say, you know, think it's a friend and grow up. But uh, with, a, with something that looks like a werewolf, uh, like out of your worst nightmare, I, I can't I can't understand how uh, a kid would be not afraid of that. No, I understand. But this is not the first time I've heard this before. Uh I know on episode 59, that's like, you know, 10 million years ago now, uh, the the lady came on, her name was Lisa. And I think I, I called the show The Other Side of Dogman. And she came on the show talking about when she was a little girl having a relationship with one of these creatures where it was like a friend to her. And I, it, I, I know this is going to sound crazy. I hope I remember it correctly. I might, I might, you know, sometimes I feel like you hear so many stories, they start blending together. Uh, but if I remember correctly, she actually described laying down next to this thing. Uh, and so, and that was when she was a little girl. And so I, this isn't the first time I've heard of a child coming across a dog man like creature and actually thinking it's friendly with them. And so I don't know. I mean, like we, we hear about in North Carolina, what was it? Two years ago. Now that kid went di- miss a disappearing f- f- or not disappearing. <laughs> that sounds like he did it himself. That kid disappeared for what two three days and when he came back they said he said the bear took care of him well we know bears aren't freaking going to take care of a kid and stuff but maybe he came across a sasquatch that that did you know and that whole idea of a motherly instinct could a dog man have that kind of an instinct with a child what is dog man then at that point is it a physical creature is it a 
more paranormal creature it, you know people say it's demonic like it, there's so many questions now you know <laughs> you know what i mean there really is i mean even you you hear like you said you hear stories about uh sasquatch especially female sasquatches helping uh kids sometimes even grown adults out uh when they're you know stuck out in the woods or uh i i remember a story me I, I can't remember what show but it was of uh somebody that was uh trying to escape he got stuck in like uh the swamp and was legitimately stuck in the muck couldn't move and this female sasquatch came picked him up like it was nothing and brought them back to the road. Um, so to even for that little boy, because I was right there in North Carolina when that happened, I was actually getting ready to go help go out look for him. And then uh, on the news, you you hear that there's a, a bear that uh, took care of him for the last three you know three four days, and it's it's it really makes you question things. But with a, a dog man, even more so. Uh, to me because that uh, i never heard of an encounter of somebody not saying that it was evil yeah um i've yeah. never bumped into one besides that uh, you know as a kid so uh, i was just automatically scared um so i i couldn't sit there and think oh is this does this is given like an evil presence or whatnot no it just scared the holy heck out of me so i, I took off but that little boy having a relationship with it and now with what you said with that that lady saying that she pretty much slept like next next to it it makes you wonder really like is it flesh and blood um that's it, it, just crazy it is crazy man and it kind of just goes along with a lot of other theories that i have and stuff it's just kind of put i just put it in the books as just another crazy crazy thing to think about and um you know we we know that sasquatch uh, has very physical attributes that people describe when they have encounters. They describe something that was very physical, was very real, at least sign that it was there, you know, it was impressions in the ground with its feet, things like that. And then we have people saying that they saw that and then it did this, which shouldn't be possible, you know? And it just makes you wonder, is Dogman in the same vein when it comes to those kind of things? And if it is, then do they come from the same place? Are they made up of the same type of uh, mysterious... Uh, origins and things like that. You know, people know my my theory. I want to say it's a theory. I'm I'm happy if I'm proven wrong on it because that's what we're doing here. We're just thinking out loud, trying to find what truth is. And so, if um, if if my theory of the idea of remnant of Nephilim type origins is wrong, I'm fine with that. Uh, but it just kind of goes into that idea for me, at least. I agree with you. I, I think that because it's very much a, a to me that was a very flesh and blood creature that it was that's scared the holy heck out of me. You couldn't couldn't be more flesh and blood than when you're roughly five six feet away from something and it scares the daylights out of you. Like uh, I, I don't question it being flesh and blood or part of the Nephilim. That was one of my theories, uh, especially with uh, Sasquatch. Um, just because of the things that other people have seen and they go into the detail with it. My, I'm, I'm right there. That's what I believe. Yeah, man. Well, Dan, what's the name of your show again? Uh, Monster Investigators of America. Where can they find it? You can find us on Podbean or anywhere else in your uh, podcast or, well, anywhere else you listen to your podcast from, but mainly Podbean. That's where we do all of our live shows from. Awesome, man. Uh, yeah, I like it. I like that you said Podbean and you didn't mention another company that's big because I am uh, currently uh, boycotting them in my own little ways. So, <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, check them out, Podbean. And Podbean's actually a really fun app. I don't use Podbean like you do, but uh, just as somebody to listen to podcasts and stuff, I always recommend Podbean to Android users because obviously they don't have the other company. And uh, like, it's a good clean app and you can comment and it just it's very functional uh i like Podbean a lot so dan thanks for coming on the show man 
Oh, thanks for having me, man. It's definitely been a, a pleasure. I'm, I'm uh, like I said, I'm a big fan of uh, the show. I've listened for a while and uh, look forward to more of the podcast. Actually, Dan, do you want to do a second hour overtime with uh, some of your North Carolina stories and other stuff? Yeah, we can do that. All right. So everybody listen up, listen up. This is just very random, spontaneous. I was wrapping it up and I was like, wait a second. I'm looking at, I literally, I'm looking down my paper and I have New Jersey circled and North Carolina circled. I'm like, wait a second. We didn't even talk about North Carolina. So if you're good with it, let's do another hour over on the overtime segment, man. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Um, I even have one more uh, super spooky Jersey story to uh, share that happened right in the heart of the Pine Barrens. Well, that's the show, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, please, please, please share the show with your friends. I don't care where or how you share the show. Just share the show if you enjoyed it. That's the best thing you can do to help this show grow. And friends, remember, this is an overtime show now. Spontaneous, yes, but it is an overtime show now where we're going to cover the last of the New Jersey encounters and the North Carolina encounters with Dan. If you're interested in that, head on over to the overtime section on the website if you're a member already. If you're not a member, you got to become a member to get access to the overtime section. So if you want to do that, go to the confessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, and you'll get access to this overtime on the website and or the Castos app. You'll have the option if you want to listen on the app as well, but that's all available to members. So- all right. Welcome to Overtime. We got Dan the man. How you doing, buddy? I am doing fantastic today. Yeah. Thanks for uh, joining me here again. Uh, like I said on the show, I mean, I'm looking at it. I'm like, wait a second. We didn't even do North Carolina. And so I was thinking, uh, let's do an overtime segment. If he's good with it, I'm glad you're good with it. And uh, we're going to jump into it, though. But before we get to North Carolina, let's do the last story from New Jersey and stuff. And then we'll uh, go down south. Yes. Uh, So me and a friend of mine, we would go every other night out into uh, like a venture, just see if we could find any like trails that are off the road and just drive down them. and. so one night we decided that we're going to go down, uh, my old, uh, stomping grounds in good old wear town and, um, take a trail, um, off one of the main roads called, uh, Wells mills. So we went down the road for a long time and we find this trail. Uh, I think we were four or five miles down it, hit the trail. We go five miles down this trail. And to the point where we actually can't go anymore because we're in a car. Normally we would take my truck, but this day we have the car. So we had to turn around and do like a K turn, turn around, point the other way. And we just stopped and we're talking and, and BSing a little bit. And then as we're talking, uh, a flash of light across uh, the sky caught our attention. So we yeah, up started looking around trying to see if maybe because you know p- people over there like to go out mudding all the time and enjoy themselves so we we're trying to see if maybe it came from a truck no trucks no nothing um we just continue to look around and, and find nothing whatsoever no lightning any of that uh so we continue just to talk and, and whatnot and then i get this this feeling inside that like when somebody's looking at you and you, you know, you get that feeling that somebody's actually staring at you. I get this feeling that somebody's staring at us. And I was there with my, my friend was a female. So I was trying not to scare her. So I was just like, I got up and turned to She's like, Oh, what are you doing? I said, oh, I just wanted to look around to see if maybe I could see where that flash came from. So, Right directly behind us, behind our car, there is a image that is darker than anything that it was outside. Standing like a human behind her car. And it was probably 1230 at night, so it was pitch dark in the Pine Barrens. You don't get a lot of light anyway. And this thing just was darker than outside. My fantasies always consisted of making it big. My soul was nothing more than a bargaining chip. Marketing is what they tell you to do and what you're willing to give. Larking to the fullest extent. I don't wait, I shoot first like hot on a rodeo. And these people don't understand me like reading a Nokian. Stretch thin, 
Like pulling an accordion, my heart ain't primordium. All these historians telling us lies, setting aside everything is medicalized. Politicians selling the ride, I better my die where the relevance lies. They're dressing alike, reptilians. My resilience is brilliant. I'm here to lead the rebellion on alien, salient, alien.